And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Bugs on Rugs. Now, I like kitchen table board games. They're a company that now, when I look at them, I say, what is it? I'm excited about it. So this is a game about collecting bug cards. It's kind of a drafting style game. There are many different bugs in this game. Cute bugs. You know, they're going to the bug ball tonight. Um, they're, they're fun little bugs. You're trying to collect sets of them. They're going to give you points in various ways. Here is how it plays. Bugs in a Rug is a very simple game. It's made up of a deck of various different bugs. And you're going to stick an end card somewhere in the deck. And basically, depending on how many players are, it's going to be farther down inside the deck. So when this card comes up, the game is over. Each round of the game, you're going to draw two cards per player. So let's say I'm playing a four-player game. I draw eight cards plus one. So there's always going to be nine cards. By the way, each player is going to start with one bug card in their hand. These cards are just placed face up in the middle of the table. And then, once they're all placed face up, the starting player of the round is going to take a card of their choice, and the next player will take one, then the next player, then the next player. Whoever went last will take a card, and you'll take bugs in reverse order. The card that's left over has what's called a wall power. This wall power then occurs. So this goes off, everyone does whatever it happens, and then you'll start the next round. And you're going to keep going until you get to the end card. And then you're going to take all the bugs in your hand, put them in front of you, and score them. And whoever has the most points is the winner. So let's take a look how the different bugs score. At the end of the game, if you have the most ants, each ant is worth five points. Second most ants, each ant's worth three. Otherwise, they're worth one point each. Butterflies are one point for each insect you only have one of. So let's say I have six butterflies, one ladybug, and one beetle at the end of the game. I have one of each of these, so each uh, butterfly will be worth two points. Ladybugs are one point each, but if you have exactly four, they're 25 points. Beetles are going to be five points each if, they're, if you have an even number at the end of the game. Otherwise, they're two points each. Fireflies, uh, or lightning bugs as we call them, uh, are worth one point times the number of different rugs you have in the backgrounds. The flies here are worth two points unless you feed them to a spider. If a spider is fed a fly, a spider is worth seven points. Larvae, if you feed them a mosquito, are worth three points. Mosquitoes aren't worth anything by themselves, but any two mosquitoes can be put together and, you know, hey, these are now an ant and I can put them together and make them whatever I want at the end of the game. Larva also might seem pretty weak considering they're three points and only if they eat a mosquito, but you can discard two larva, it shows it right here, to the bottom of the deck to take a card from the wall. The cards that are face up in front of everybody, there's a wall, basically it's like a discard pile, uh, into your hand. So they can give you those. And again, I mentioned the wall power that will go off. Each one of these is going to be different. Uh, sometimes, so for example, the fly wall power right here, everyone's going to pass a card from their hand to the person on their right. And then the beetle, everyone passes the card to the person from their left. Or you all might put a card in the middle or put a card in the wall and then take a card. And so there's various different things that are here, like the butterfly to start player shows everyone a bug, and then that wall power goes off. Um, so these will go off at the end of a round and cause something to happen. And that's pretty much the game. I'm a big fan of the quality of this game. The art is fantastic. The card quality is great. The symbology, you're probably going to have to look at the book for a while to quite understand what it does. But once you figure it out, it's pretty simple what it does. But yeah, like I said, at the beginning, you'll be looking them up quite a bit. I do like that the end card here shows you where it goes in a pile. I don't know. That's something that tickles me about games. And the rule book itself is not a very long rule book and has these pages, which you'll be looking at quite a bit um, to figure out what everything does at the beginning of the game. There's also a score pad that's included that's going to show you what each, you know, you just score each of the bugs as you go through. And the components are pretty good. So you can see the quality for bugs on rugs is quite good. The game itself is very simple. 
I take a card, go around the table, then you get two, comes back around to me. And it's your turn. You go around the table, and we keep going until that end of the game card shows up. Games of this aren't very long at all. It says 20 minutes on here. You're going to spend at least three or four of those minutes scoring the game. So it's a pretty quick game all around. I like bugs on rugs. I like these type of drafting games where you collect things. And it's very clear in this game some are pretty cool. You know, the Beatles give you more points if you have an even number, so just get an even number. The Getting the exactly four of the one type, that's it, kind of an interesting thing. Have the most ants. Some are less interesting than others, like the larvae aren't quite as good as the rest of the bugs, but then they have that rule where you can discard two of them. I'm not sure spiders are that useful. I mean, they're worth seven points, but you need two cards to do it. You also need a fly. While ants, if you have the most, are worth five points each. It kind of works out in the end. So I really enjoy this game. My only caveat, and the reason this is getting a seal of approval rather than seal of excellence, are the wall powers. Now, I think that's a fine thing, right? But the problem is, you would think it's more strategic. Everyone goes around and picks a bug, and then it comes around, and the card that's left over, that's the wall power. And I'm like, ooh, I need to think about that. But the wall powers are really just kind of random factors in the game. Everyone pass a card to the right. Everyone pass a card to the left. Everyone discard a card and draw a new one. It's just, they're okay, but I don't feel like when I'm the last player, and I get there and there's two cards, and I'm going, which one do I want? I should pick the one for the wall power. No, usually you pick the one that helps you score better. So the wall powers feel like a random thing that happens. Now, I'm sure someone will say, but it's not random. You need to plan for it, blah, blah, blah. But it's kind of random because unless you're the last player, you don't really choose what the wall power is. Sure, you could set it up by, uh, I don't want this wall power to go off, so I'll take this card. But that messes up your scoring. You're better off going for your scoring. It just, if the wall powers had been eliminated from Bugs and the Rugs, I think I still would like it. If it had just been the drafting, I would have been fine. I don't actually even dislike the wall powers. I'm just not sure that they add a ton to the game. They certainly differentiate it from games like Sushi Go, uh, other drafting games, right? So it does make this one different. It does make it a little more confusing to teach kids. The game says 8+. plus. I did play this with my kids, and my kids enjoyed it. But the wall powers kind of threw them off. They understood, get the most of this, get exactly four of this, get even number, odd number. They got that. But it was like, all right, what does this wall power do? Okay, everyone write, oh, man, I didn't know that was going to happen. I don't want to pass any of my cards to the right. Well, you have to. That's how it is. So that's all my only detracting point against this. Other than that, the quality and the drafting is really fun, and that point isn't strong enough to make me not play the game. I still really enjoy it, despite that. So that's Bugs on Rugs, a small little card game. Check it out. Dice Tower Judgment, approved. <laughs>